What's going on guys? Liz here from Learn Robotics. And if you've ever wanted to take multiple analog sensors and capture the readings into a CSV file, then you're gonna wanna stay tuned for this week's tutorial. Let's head on over to the circuit board and I'll show you how to get it wired up. So we're gonna need to set up the Arduino Uno. I'm using just a simple um, tensiometer setup and a photoresistor. You can use whatever analog sensors you want for this demonstration. You can use as many analog sensors as you want, but it's just a pretty typical analog sensor setup. And if you're not familiar with how that works or what the difference between digital and analog sensors are, I recommend checking out my course, Arduino for Beginners. This is a level one course that teaches just about anybody the basics of signal processing, the connection between hardware and software for data collection, and eventually decision making using um, small subsets of data and conditional logic. So if you're interested in that, check that out. There's a link below this video, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on my blog, learnrobotics.org. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the software. Um, we want to be able to read in the, the information from our sensors. We've got just two uh, simple sensors set up here on analog zero and analog one, which you can see the circuit, we've got um, a potentiometer, which is connected to analog zero. And then we've got our photoresistor, which is connected to analog one. Just a very simple setup. You can see that I've got some LEDs here, but we're not using those in this project that was left over from a previous project. So all I want you to focus on are these two analog inputs, which we can kind of get some data from. We've got the potentiometer, which is just a rotational uh, variable resistance. And then we've got ourselves a photoresistor, which is a variable resistor as well, but it's dependent on light. So the brighter it is, the higher the number, the darker it is, the lower the number. And you can choose your, your range and your metrics on how you wanna measure this based on whether you pull the resistance up or pull the resistance down. So this is just our circuit here. I'm gonna leave a link to the fritzing diagram, the schematic on how to wire this up, but it's pretty standard. Uh, just wire up your sensors to the two analog pins, and then we're gonna head into the software, make sure that we've got the same pin mappings for sensor one and sensor two. And then I've also decided to give some data labels. We can use these um, as we're creating our CSV file later on. The purpose of this whole project is to collect data so that we can use the data for future analysis. And so then we've got some global variables here that we can use to store our data. And I kept this very generic because I want this to be something that you can use as a starting point for your own data collection using hardware sensors. So this can literally represent whatever you want. Typically, I recommend naming things based on what you're doing. So if you are doing a specific application using a potentiometer and photoresistor, it might make more sense to kind of name your sensors accordingly and name your data labels accordingly. We're gonna come back to this um, percent and this threshold later. This is just from our collections and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, setup is pretty standard. Uh, we've got to begin our serial monitor. The Arduino Uno use a 9600 baud rate, so that's pretty typical. We've got to set up our pin modes as inputs. So sensor one and sensor two, they're both inputs to the controller. And then once we have all that done, we can actually jump down into our loop and start writing code that matters. Um, well, we're going to skip this first while loop. I'll come back to that in a few minutes. But what I wanted to focus on is our, our typical data collection. So when you have sensors um, that are connected to the Arduino, you basically want to go sensor by sensor to pull that information from the controller. And so what we can do is use the built-in method analog read for sensor one. And we're going to store that into our global variable, data one. And we'll do the same thing for sensor two which is the analog read on sensor two, and we'll store that again in global variable data two. So this is pretty typical. If you had a third sensor, you could create another global called data three and do an analog read on sensor three. And this is just reading whatever the input pin is. So you can go all the way up to A5 on this controller, which is the Arduino Uno. So you can have up to six sensors connected to the Arduino, and you can start reading through all of them. And of course you could always add on more using a variety of circuit techniques, but we're not gonna cover that in this little demo. So once we have our data, we want to be able to create ourselves a CSV and a CSV is a comma separated value file, which means data is separated by commas. And so to do that, we're gonna grab that data that we just got from our sensor, data one, 
we're going to print it to the serial monitor and then we're going to add a comma and then we're going to grab our second piece of data and we're going to print that out as well. And so basically this will create kind of some data that looks the format of, let's just say we got a reading of 255 from our potentiometer and then we got another reading of 850 from our LDR. And so that's kind of what, it, what this format will look like when we print it out to the serial monitor. And then when we get another bit of readings, we can do like, let's say 275 and let's say 300. Um, and so it'll, it'll automatically do like line by line. Um, that's why we've got ourselves a print line here. It'll automatically add a new line and then print out the next batch of readings. So once we do that, I want to go back and explain some new globals that I've added in here. So we basically want to keep track of um, our current values. So we, this is why we have current one and current two. Um, what's kind of annoying with Arduino is if you get if you collect data and it's the same, it's going to keep displaying the same numbers over and over and over again. And so to eliminate the same readings, so let's just say like it's still at 275, 275, 300. It's going to keep printing out 275 comma 300 forever. And so basically one, what we want to do is we want to check to see like, is our current reading equal to a new reading? And if it is, don't bother printing it out. And so to do that, we're going to just set up a conditional that basically checks both ranges of the data that we collect, the current value, and then the new value plus a threshold. And that threshold is calculated based on a percentage. So what we're going to do is basically look within the range of 5% greater or 5% less of that current value. And if it's not inside of that range, then we're going to print it out. And if it is, then we're not going to print it out. We're going to do nothing and we're going to wait until the next reading is outside of that range. That way we have enough variance or you know, some sort of like tolerance between all the readings. So we're not looking at the exact same number. Now I understand that this may not work for every single application and you want to collect every single reading regardless of if they're equal. But I did want to kind of point this out that if you wanted to be able to say like we have, you know, a 5% tolerance in either direction, if it's within 5%, we don't really care. We just want to know like when it's over 5% or under 5%, print it out. And so that's kind of what this calculation does. So we basically set our percent. So we've got a 10-bit controller, which means we have 1024 possibilities. So our range is 0 to 1023. So if we take that times our percent, we're looking at roughly um, plus or minus 50 um, steps in our data. And so basically, if we are within 50 on either side of the current data versus the new piece of data, then we're not going to print it out. But if we're greater than that range, then we will print it out. And so that's just kind of what this is. It, it may not make sense for your application, but I did want to just kind of point that out. If, you're, if you don't want to necessarily print it out, if it's equal or within a range, then you can use some sort of calculation to set your, your thresholds so that you print, that out, print it out correctly. So that's basically what we have for the Arduino code. And this, this is fine as is, like if you just need a way to view data from the serial monitor using the Arduino, then you can just go ahead and we've got ourselves some readings here. It prints out the two header values. So let me go and kind of walk you through that. So basically, um, we have this ability to print out the header labels if you want to be able to just look at it and no column headers, which values go to which uh, device. And so that's why this is set to true. And when it's true, we just go ahead and print out the labels in that comma separated value format. And then we set it false because we don't need it to keep printing out headers throughout our data collection. We just need to do it once at the top. And then we go through, we collect ourselves a reading, and then we check our current reading versus our previous reading to see if we need to print something out because there hasn't been enough variance between Either sets of data, we keep the same piece of data. Now, if I go and put my hand over this sensor, you'll see that we're going to collect a bunch of pieces of data just because there's enough of a difference. Um, there's at least 51 uh, values higher or lower in either direction for it to print out. Um, and so it's going through and it's, and it's checking on a frequency of one second. 
Um, so that's basically how this works. Um, if you're good with this, you've basically got all your readings, you have them printed to the serial monitor, you could just go and do like a nice little copy paste and you could you could potentially even include some timestamps in with this, get some more data. Um, so you can include all the timestamps, you could do like a nice little copy paste, open up, open up Excel, paste it in there and you've got your data. And for a lot of people, this is perfectly fine. This is all you really care about. Um, this could be enough. But for people that are looking to do something more with um, Excel and they want to be able to automate this process, kind of a nice thing that you can do. I'm going to kind of not show the timestamp. I'm going to close out of the serial monitor. I'm going to bring in Python, which is super nice. Go ahead and use the uh, serial library and you can actually set the port to whatever your Arduino is plugged into. On Windows, it'll be in the COM whatever number format. On a Mac, it's gonna be in this format here, which is what I'm using right now. You can set your baud rate, set up a file name. Um, samples is just something that I've done so that it doesn't run forever. Um, you can set this to whatever number you want, however many pieces of data or rows of data you wanna collect. And then labels is if you want to just kind of view this um, in Python. Let's just go ahead and take a look at it. I can kind of show you how this works. And so basically I've just created this nice little uh, directory on my desktop here where I've got both the Arduino program and all the Python programs. And so you can kind of see we've got the actual file, the CSV file that we generate and the actual code that allows us to generate it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this. So basically what we wanna do is connect to the serial monitor. We print out which port we're running. We open up our file, which is this analog data file, and we just append to it. You can write to it and create a, a fresh copy by just changing this to a W, or you can append to it. Um, which is what I've done previously. We'll go ahead and just create a blank copy of this. And I'm going to actually just delete this for you so you can see how this actually works. We go up in a terminal. We've got to go find ourselves. We've got to go ahead and just like make sure that we're inside of this directory, inside of terminal, which is good. And then we can just go ahead and run the Python. And we're going to run the read serial uh, dot pi, hit enter. Now we've created this file, which you can see we've just generated, and now we've got our reading from our potentiometer and our photoresistor, and now we've got this new file here that we can either open up with like a text editor and just take a look at it. And I believe because we haven't collected all the data, it's not going to show up, so let's go ahead and well, we can open up the text editor here. We can go ahead and we can see we've got all of the data in our terminal that we've just printed out serially, logged. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows, ten samples, which is what we've defined as how many samples we want. And then we've got the ten samples here. And so what's kind of nice about this is this is a CSV file, so we can go ahead and open this with Excel and got it in Excel now. We've got these nice uh, sensor headings and then all the data that we've just collected. And if we wanted to go ahead and keep collecting samples, we can actually just change this to an A and append to the end of it. It will add the headers again, um, which is, depending on your application, may or may not be the right thing to do. But just kind of wanted to show you where we're at. So now I'm just gonna kind of play around with this and try to rotate this potentiometer so we get some different potentiometer readings. And then we can go ahead and open this up in Excel. And you can see that we've got our first batch of readings from previously where basically the photoresistor was changing. And then the next batch of readings, the photoresistor is gonna change a little bit here and there just because it's super sensitive to light. But we've also got the variable readings from the potentiometer which you can see line up pretty nicely if I kind of place them next to each other, basically line up one for one. It's taking the information, shows us on the serial monitor, and then it goes ahead and it appends it to the analog data file.
Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to check out this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you in gathering data and storing it into a CSV file for further data processing and analytics. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my upcoming tutorials. I'm Liz from Learn Robotics. Check out the full tutorial written on my blog, learnrobotics.org. See ya.